Hey everybody, Ken Clark here with my good friend Marshall Shore. I dragged him out of his house one more time. And we want to talk about the hoe. We want to talk about the biggest hoe downtown. He's not pointing at me. He's pointing up there, just to be clear. So the Westward hoe, there are probably a lot of things you don't know about it um, that I didn't know about it. I'm learning all the time. There used to be famous restaurants in the hoe. Uh, there are all the famous people who stayed at the hoe and what the future of the hoe may be. So let's tar start with, I'm gonna get behind the camera and like maybe try and zoom in on this, but tell me about the top of the hoe. So when you look at that very top floor, you'll notice something kind of peculiar is the fact that you've got those columns for the original building. And then there are those two modern additions that were added later with on. With the big windows? With the big windows, exactly. And so there was a club, it was called the Kiva Club, and then that closed and it became something called the Top of the Hoe which has a very different connotation now when you talk about the top of the hoe than a fancy restaurant. So they had t-shirts that would say, meet me at the top of the hoe? They did. I love it. So yeah, I mean, but what I love about those modern additions is one of them was an apartment. And what is it now? So I'm assuming everything is still there. I mean, it was so late 50s with this big my, um, biomorphic planner when you walked in. And then when you wa went to the, walk out the windows, there was wainscoting that if you tapped, that's where the bar was. It would open up and that's where you would stash all your liquor. I love it. And so that was when the manager, um, this was before they did the big renovation. Uh -huh. And so she basically kept the job more for, I think, the apartment than anything because when, it was a did great they do the view. Big renovation? Um, would have been the early 2000s. Okay, so then that's the one thing that I wanted to say. Because, and you can tell me whether this is wrong, because these little vignettes are a lot about proving Ken's mythology wrong because I have a lot of false impersonation impressions of stuff. Anyway, so, so I was told that there was a theater in there. Uh, the Thunderbird had, Room, yes. Oh, so it had, okay, so it had a name. And so they built, to build more residents inside the West, Westward Ho, they basically built a box inside the theater so they wouldn't touch all the frescoes and stuff. And there are right. apartments in that box. Yeah, so I mean, that was actually one of the great things they did was because it's on national historic status, yeah. they couldn't muck with the walls. Okay. So when they did that, they did indeed build them so that at some point they can be dismantled and okay. that room will be just like it was originally. Okay, and so then it's, a lot of famous people stayed there. So yeah, so you had Jackie Gleason had a standing apartment there because he had a TV show from here. You also had folks like JFK who stayed here. Okay. You've got um, Nixon stayed there. You, um, you've got Marilyn Monroe who actually filmed right out in front for Bus Stop. Okay. So, I mean, lots of famous folks stayed here. And there was the addition. Right, so the addition was actually done by Del Webb. And that's what you can't see, that's the lower part, right? right? So you kind of, when you look at it, you kind of see the little bit of a tower. Yeah. And so that was, that's the J-Wing. And so that's where the pool is outside. There's a little okay. courtyard with a pool. And so that's why all the slubs would stay there because it was poolside. Okay, cool. So the status of the hoe, I just have to keep saying it that way. <laughs> the status of the hoe. The, this is this is HUD housing because it has federal kind of tax credits to make it HUD housing. Right. The building is owned by the federal government? It's actually owned by a group that actually applies to the government for that tax incentive. Okay. So then once that incentive runs out, you said about 10 years. About 10 years. It could go in any direction. It could. And so and that's kind of, we don't know. Right. I mean, right now there's the possibility that maybe the thought now would be condos yeah um, back to a hotel or maybe even dorm rooms but mm -hmm. who knows what the landscape will be in downtown Phoenix in a decade I mean there's so much change going on right now that in a decade who knows what this will look like I think condos is the best idea because Marshall and I are gonna be hanging out in these condos when we're in our 70s and we're gonna talk about the good old days and the way and kids these days and how how terrible kids are these days as we're sipping martinis as we're sipping martinis yeah so um, well, so here's the interesting thing. We really want to know what you think should happen to the hoe. I mean, if it were to change tomorrow, what do you think should happen? And also, if you want to know more about all the very interesting things that have happened in downtown Phoenix, that again, I bet you don't know about, go look up Marshall Shore, the hip historian, on any number of platforms of the, of the social medias, the social medias, and, and you'll find <laughs> the a lot of really good, interesting stories on the medias. So thank you for taking your time. Ah, oh, thank you. Always a pleasure. And now you can go back to your house. All right. Bye. Bye.